All right, uh, thanks. Uh, very glad to be here and uh, um, um, a very interesting uh, discussions and presentations. And uh, um, uh, so I'm going to talk a little bit about um, the readiness of building applications, uh, building sort of new life applications using, um, you know, Web3 and uh, uh, blockchain technologies. Uh, so I'm with uh, uh, Instacart, and this is with uh, also with my colleague uh, Lee Tan, who is also here. So uh, Instacart, of course, is in the uh, uh, retail business, uh, let's say e-commerce, and we also do uh, cost deliveries. Um, so we're not we're in the in the web 2.0 uh, world, and uh, we're not really uh, using any of these uh, uh, blockchain or web three technologies. Uh, but there's a, actually a lot of interest uh, looking into this area because e-commerce retail is really, really very big and you know, to a certain extent is the driving force behind Web, web 2.0. So the natural question is, you know, how Web 3.0 can happen, right? Um, so, uh, but we're not there yet. Uh, there's a lot of interest, uh, things about, oh, how can we issue an NFT as a privilege for people to get some kind of, uh, you know, uh, uh, products on the uh, e-commerce, uh, you know, environment uh, system, uh, and as a way of uh, uh, incentivizing uh, people uh, to use uh, the e-commerce platform more and more. Uh, but there's a lot of uh, uh, discussions. Uh, uh, not a lot of things uh, have happened yet. Uh, on the other hand, because of all these issues, like you know, the driving force of the uh, you know internet economy and uh, and also, uh, uh, there are, there's a lot of data in there. Uh, there's uh, privacy issues, and uh, you know uh, how do we leverage more and more data? Um, so this seems to be an area that uh, uh, Web three can help a lot. Um, so I'm trying to look into one problem, one particular problem that is very very uh, central uh, to e-commerce, which is recommendations. So. Uh, we use a lot of recommendations in our business, and uh, this is uh, true from you know Netflix and from uh, many many uh, this uh, web 2.0 uh, uh, platform. So recommendations are very very important. But in order to do recommendations, uh, we need to do a lot a lot of analytics, um, data mining, or machine learning, right? So uh, without these, uh, you know, we cannot do uh, recommendations. So my question here is, you know. Um, how things can change, or uh, how will things change in the uh, in the Web three world? Oh, so, um, so this is a mostly just a thought experiment. I want to look into this area. I want to uh, 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 to be able to answer two questions. One is uh, uh, recommendations for NLP. Uh, so if you want to, you know, recommend uh, NLP to to the users, uh, what needs to be done here? Right? So if you go to uh, open C, um, uh, you know, uh, at least for me, uh, I will immediately be uh, disoriented. I, I don't know what I'm looking at. You know, I don't know uh, what they mean and what's their value and, uh, you know, what are the uh, collections and, uh, you know, what are the, um, uh, what is their history and all these kind of things. I, I just don't, I just feel totally lost, right? So a lot of people will have uh, similar feelings and uh, this definitely is not a good thing uh, if you want to promote a lot of uh, transactions, a lot of uh, sales um, uh, in, uh, on your platform. So uh, recommendations and of course, uh, personalization are very, very important. Uh, and then, you know, uh, of course, you know, in the web 2.0 world, we are doing all these kind of things in a centralized uh, uh, manner, right? We, we, we have, you know, these transaction systems we collect a lot of data and then we put them in the data warehouse we do a lot of uh, you know slice and dicing aggregation feature and everything is uh, is centralized right uh, so there are uh, pros and cons and uh, now you know we have this uh, uh, decentralized uh, environment and uh, um, um, uh, people, are, people are talking about you know decentralized intelligence and all these kind of things but so how, how things can help right so the first thing you need to do uh, when you talk about uh, recommendations, uh, of course, you, you need to know what are the things you are going to recommend. So uh, we need to collect a lot of data. Like right? 
you know, in e-commerce and retail, the first thing you need to do is um, uh, for each product, uh, you need to have all these kind of descriptions. And the second thing, uh, very, very important, is that you need to have a taxonomy or an ontology of the things that the, uh, uh, you, you want to sell, you want, to, uh, you want people to buy on, on your platform. But if you look at the NLT, uh, it's actually very, very difficult. I haven't seen anything, uh, you know, uh, sort of uh, remotely uh, related to like the ontology of NFT or a taxonomy of the NFT. There are some things, you know, on specific websites, like, uh, you know, these platforms like OpenSea, but it's very, very narrow, or very, very uh, shallow at, at this point. Of course, in the real world, we have many, many uh, taxonomies, many, many uh, ontologies, uh, but uh, of course, you know, um, these NFTs, uh, the world of NFT, the universe of NFT is quite different from the real world, the real universe. So we might need something uh, very different, right? So a few days ago, uh, I learned about, you know, uh, right now, uh, museums are issuing NFTs uh, for the artworks that are in exhibition. Uh, uh, in the in the in the museums, then of course you know there are a lot of information behind uh, each of these uh, NFT. Like you know what is this uh, real art piece uh, is about? It's a history and all these kind of things. Uh, but then you know for many many other things, there are also a lot of history, a lot of stories, and uh, all these kind of things behind um, uh, the things that uh, you know. Uh, uh, um, um, this NFT is about, right? So this seems to be much, much more complicated than, you know, just creating a taxonomy or ontology for, you know, uh, uh, um, uh, your, 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 your normal products like electronics or even, even uh, groceries and all these kind of things. So there are, there's a lot of uh, information you need to um, keep track of. So uh, eventually it's not going to be just uh, and ontology or taxonomy is going to be sort of like a, a knowledge graph, which is uh, uh, in the NFT world, in the in the uh, in this uh, virtual world. Um, and then you will need uh, regular features, like uh, features about online on-chain activities, like uh, uh, you know historically what are what are the market values, uh, holding times, ownership transitions, and uh, these kind of things are quite available. Uh, you know, uh, overseas there's already uh, a lot of uh, this kind of data, uh, but other features will be uh, more difficult to come by, like uh, features about customers. So it's very, very difficult to uh, decide, you know, what is the intent, what is the motivation behind a purchase. So buying these NFTs are, is going to be very, very different from buying, you know, electronics or groceries. In those space, it's kind of easy uh, to figure out the intent and uh, all these kind of things. But for NFTs, like, you know, thinking about all the bragging uh, and thinking about, you know, uh, uh, all these activities in the real world and then in the virtual world. So it's, uh, it's much more difficult to figure out the intent and the motivations uh, behind our purchase, right? And the, and then the next one is like, you know, you need to know uh, features about market value predictions. Uh, so what is the, uh, you know, when I'm on, on, on uh, OpenSea, the natural question is like, oh, how, how, how will this thing, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, how valuable is this thing, you know, uh, down the road, three months or six months down the road, or uh, even just the next week, right? So, uh, to understand uh, uh, you know the value uh, of a, a particular product uh, uh, NFT down the road is very very important. Uh, then there are many many things right uh, you know uh, you need to um, uh, take into consideration when you uh, try to model these things. And the most important might be uh, authenticity, right? So you know uh, even in the NFT world, uh, you want to understand the similarity of uh, two NFTs. And, um, uh, so uh, there are uh, solutions like a perceptual hash um, or even like, you know, uh, companies providing uh, NFT verif verification as a service, right? And then there's another thing, which is also very important, but very related to the 
to the value of NFT, which is the rarity, right? So there are you know uh, metrics uh, uh, such as statistical rarity, uh, which sounds like uh, sophisticated, but it's really very very simple concept. It's a multiplication of the rarity of uh, each uh, property or each feature of that particular NFT. Uh, but these are the things you know um, need to be taken into consideration if we really want to build a a um, uh, recommendation systems uh, for uh, for NFT. Um, and then the next thing, next question we have is like, you know, how do we get the data? Um, so, you know, if we are only interested in a subset of those uh, NFTs, uh, we may just go to uh, OpenSea and uh, you can use OpenSea uh, APIs to, uh, uh, to download, uh, you know, a few hundred, uh, you know, uh, uh, NFTs uh, together with all the information associated with them, like the history and the, you know the description of each NFT. But that's not going to uh, help you to build a very sophisticated system for you know uh, uh, a lot of NFTs or for you to recommend NFTs uh, you know to uh, to other customers, right? Uh, and then there are uh, blockchain APIs because you know NFTs are on the blockchain, uh, so you can use uh, Infura, Alchemy, or many many others to grab the information. Uh, but these are the really you know very very shallow, very narrow you know NL, uh, you know APIs. Uh, uh, just give you uh, some uh, very specific information related to a particular transaction that on the on the on the on the NFT uh, on the on the blockchain. Uh, which is uh, which is not going to be enough, and also does not uh, scale very very well. Um, and then you know uh, uh, the next thing you can do is like, uh, 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 how about we just uh, centralize everything? Like you know, go to uh, Ethereum and uh, you know, study from the um, uh, Genesis node and uh, all, go all the way to the latest block and uh, get all the information, get all the uh, uh, well, yeah, uh, a lot of companies like uh, do that, but it's uh, also not very, very uh, straightforward. If you just want to get all the NFTs, it's, uh, there are protocols, there are off-chain data, and uh, you know it actually takes a lot of uh, effort. There's a very long paper being written about how to you know access all the NFT information uh, on a, on a, on the blockchain. So it's not going to be uh, very simple, and there are. Uh, uh, systems uh, designed uh, for these purposes, right? So when I think about this, usually I feel like, you know, uh, there's this analogy which uh, uh, is uh, quite uh, appropriate, which is, you know, OLTP versus OLAP, right? So if you are in the data management uh, world, you know, like, uh, you know, there's a transactional system, there's an analytical uh, system. So uh, when you interact with the e-commerce, you do all these kind of things to search, you get to your shopping cart, every action you, 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 you perform, uh, this information are being recorded in the transactional database. And then later on, it gets, uh, sliced and diced and, and aggregated and uh, you know uh, um, uh, and put into a data warehouse where you do a lot of analytics. Now right now it's like you know with all these APIs, what you have is you are using you are trying to access this uh, transactional uh, system and this transactional system, this transactional data is really very very much much more complicated than you know uh, the traditional uh, relational uh, data given the blockchain uh, structure in the um, uh, need to authenticate their, uh, 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 to authenticate the data and everything. So the structure is already very, very difficult to, to access. Uh, and still, I mean, it's, it's, it's not aggregated data, right? So you have to have uh, all these data together uh, to perform some kind of uh, analytics, uh, which makes this uh, uh, really uh, very, very challenging, right? And then you know uh, you feel like oh this is still this is really quite dumb like uh, you know uh, um, uh, if we still have to uh, you know aggregate all the data together put all the data in the in the same uh, space and then you can um, uh, only after that you can do uh, this kind of slice and dicing and visualization and analytics you know. Uh, since this is a uh, web three, uh, how about we just do it in the in the in a web three way, right? 
so there's a definitely a lot of benefits for doing that. Like, uh, you know, the first thing is trustworthiness, right? So, um, you know, in e-commerce, in, uh, uh, in, in retail, like uh, uh, this is really very important because if you search for something, uh, the search engine will turn you uh, uh, a list of items, a list of products, right? but people don't really trust them. And they, they, there's a good reason you know, for, for the customer needs of this kind of list. Because when the e-commerce uh, um, search engine uh, ranks these items, they take into consideration a lot of factors, right? Not just the relevance of uh, you know, these, uh, these, uh, these items to your, to your query, to your intent, but other things like you know, ads, things like you know, the e-commerce wants to maximize its profit, or the e-commerce wants to maximize the future growth opportunities and all these kind of things. So all these factors are being taken into consideration when they rank other results and present to uh, to different customers, right? So uh, so this uh, trustworthiness is a very very important issue. So uh, uh, that's uh, uh, a problem for you know uh, the customers of uh, our web to their own. Um, you know applications and uh, also a problem for um, for the uh, for the e-commerce for the uh, you know service providers right and then there's the other things like you know uh, privacy and the security and uh, all these kind of things uh, you know if, in order for you to do a personalized uh, uh, recommendation you need a lot of personalized data privacy data right so for uh, e-commerce like uh, you know, like uh, Instacart you know one of uh, one of the biggest challenges for us and for many um, e-commerce is like how are we going to handle new customers like uh, uh, in a closed uh, uh, manner, right? Uh, because we spend a lot of money, uh, every e-commerce spend a lot of money, marketing dollars to try to attract you know, people to come to our website, uh, but only very, very small percentage of these uh, customers will convert, right? Uh, because they are in a new environment and they don't know how to get around and for many, many reasons, it's very, very difficult for them uh, to convert. And uh, of course, you know, uh, we want to improve the conversion rate, but in order to improve the conversion rate, we need the data, uh, privacy, private data about these uh, customers, which we don't have. So, you know, if we can solve this problem, uh, of course, you know, uh, we'll know our, our customers in, in a much better way and we can do a lot of things. And, uh, Without really infringing on the um, you know privacy of the uh, customer, so this is uh, uh, also another uh, very important mo motivation. Uh, the last one is like you know if uh, everything is good, like you know uh, we have the right protocol, we have the right standards and everything. So a lot of uh, uh, services can be uh, created uh, to provide these kind of data uh, for different uh, products you have. Uh, you know uh, you are selling or you need uh, recommendations for. So uh, once these kind of uh, mechanisms have been set up, then you know there's a lot of opportunity to improve uh, the data, and then you know you will be able to improve the uh, recommendation. So there's a lot of benefit of, for for doing that. But how how are we going to do that? Like you know, of course, this is the uh, uh, in a in a, at a uh, in a very very early stage. Uh, so uh, we already have seen uh, quite a few. Uh, you know, are quite a lot of discussions about you know block, uh, blockchain based recommendation as a service. Uh, so how do you uh, you know use collaborative and privacy preserving machine learning uh, to support these kind of uh, things as the uh, uh, you know uh, 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 you know L2 blockchain and uh, you know, all these kind of uh, 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 there are many possibilities there. Uh, and there's uh, also uh, private computation over decentralized data, uh, you know, uh, since the data has been uh, used uh, in different places and in, um, deployed in, uh, I mean, uh, po possibly on the, uh, on the blockchain. And uh, then how do we provide, uh, how do we, uh, uh, you know, uh, perform like a private computation uh, over these distributed data? There are quite a few uh, solutions uh, out there, uh, but of course, at the uh, early stage. Um, so, you know, uh, as we can see here, like there are really, really a lot of changes from data, from, you know, computation and uh, 
you know, uh, and uh, and also you know uh, all the uh, platforms and the systems we need to work together. Uh, uh, just the things I mentioned in these uh, you know five six slides. Um, I can see lots lots of uh, challenges and opportunities. Like I mentioned, the authenticity, like uh, you know perception clash. Uh, that is one startup company. Right. Uh, I also mentioned you know. Uh, how do you centralize the data and all these uh, kind of things and provide uh, service uh, uh, for you know uh, uh, more sophisticated like aggregated uh, information? And that is uh, a set of uh, startups. Uh, there are quite a few startup companies uh, uh, working in, in, in the space. So if you think about this, there are really lots of opportunities. But on the other hand, you also feel like it's not ready. Yet, like you, you know, if I just want to build a recommendation service for an appeal for our products in the Web3 environment, it seems like I need a lot of pieces to be much, much more mature than they are now uh, before before they can work. Right? Uh, but still, like I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I, 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 I'm quite op optimistic. I feel like there's a value here. Uh, and uh, a lot of people are building things, and uh, uh, you know, uh, hopefully, um, in uh, a year or two or three, uh, maybe uh, you know, uh, we can we can be uh, these things will become more modernistic. All right, thanks. Uh, any question for I think? What are some of the applications of? Some of these kind of recommendations outside of the community. Do you see any sort of specific applications being more tenable than others? So, recommendations are really, really very common, you know, in e commerce, right? So, uh, things uh, when you search for things, when you browse for things, you know. Uh, the results that you are being presented are uh, basically uh, uh, the results of our uh, recommendation system. It takes into consideration a lot of things like, uh, you know, uh, uh, if you search, like, what are you searching for? If you are not searching, you are just browsing, then your browsing history, like, uh, you know, um, a session, the current session uh, that you are having with the with the system and also of course your previous uh, purchase histories and uh, all, all things like that and uh, you know uh, usually we, we we call this you know explore and explore it uh, meaning like you know we just want to use your uh, previous behavior to predict your new uh, your current intent but we also want to give you something you haven't tried before so so that you you are, you are seeing new things so you, you explore um the entire space uh, so recommendations are really really uh, the key to uh, uh to e-commerce uh, when they try to um you know um improve their revenue or increase their basket size and, uh, and everything so uh, that is uh, uh uh yeah that is a recommendation what's the recommendation about uh, but the question like uh, is there um, uh, a relatively easier you know simpler uh, applications uh, that can leverage you know uh, these kind of technologies for for uh, uh, for e-commerce um, I think I think so there are a few of these uh, like you know I think the, um, just very recently I also read about something like you know for e-commerce uh, companies to provide some kind of NFTs uh, as a privilege uh, for you to get something for free. Like if you, I sell you, if you, you are owner of a particular NFT, let's say every two weeks you get a free carton of milk or something like that, like a quite a ridiculous idea, right? But you know, how, how valuable is this NFT? And then maybe you can resell this NFT and uh, you know, uh, to other people or exchange for uh, other NFTs and, and, uh, and uh, all things like that. But I feel like, uh, you know, I, I don't know where this is going to be a realistic idea or, you know, a, you know, a meaningful thing to, to, to do. But I think it's, it's kind of like, uh, you know, superficial. It's not really like uh, using a lot of data, using a lot of analytics uh, to, 
it's not really the call of the full uh, you know, uh, uh, e-commerce, uh, but in order for us to use uh, Web3 for the current e-commerce, uh, they are challenging because a lot of us, a lot of these things are driven by very, very deep analytics. And in order for you to do deep analytics, decentralized uh, system is a, is a challenge. What do you think is missing in the Web2 and the Web3 ecosystem that you Decentralized will solve for customers, not from technology, but from customers. Yeah, so so I mentioned a few, like, you know, uh, uh, privacy is one of them, like, uh, 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 a lot of, uh, uh, you know, personal information uh, people are not sharing, and, uh, you know, uh, and sometimes it's also um, uh, uh, we're not able to use this kind of information. And uh, uh, code stuff is a very big problem just because we don't have uh, this type of data, right? So assuming, you know, you can bring your Amazon purchase uh, history to another website, right? Uh, because the Amazon purchase history is your data, right? So you have the right to this kind of data, but this kind of data is actually will help you uh, to find your, uh, find a, 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 a products that are related to you on another website. Actually. But this is not possible at this point. 